Let's talk about the first lens you should buy as a landscape photographer. But before I want to talk about the lens and why are the reasons you should buy that lens, let me just tell you about two other lens that you should not buy as a landscape photographer beginner and what are the reasons uh, for that. I noticed during my workshops that a lot of landscape photography beginners think that the first lens that you need is an ultra wide lens, something like the 16 to 35 or the 17 to 40 millimeter. And they go and buy that because they're seeing all those beautiful photos with impressive foreground elements. And then you have a really beautiful thing developing in the background. And you can't achieve that if you don't have an ultra wide. Uh, but here is the problem and here's why as a landscape photographer beginner, you should not buy that lens as your first lens. You don't have a good understanding of how to compose a good landscape photo. You don't understand how to choose the subject and how the focal length uh, affects the perspective and uh, affects the way you are uh, seeing the landscape in front of you. And the mistake that they're doing well, with their ultra wide lens is that they frame too much of the scene because this is, this is the problem with a, an ultra wide lens. It fits everything into the photo, but it's not the way you should use it. Uh, they tend to have either too much foreground or maybe too much sky. And usually the subject is some small element in the background over there because they lack the understanding that, uh, that a, an ultra wide lens will enhance the foreground and diminish the background and you need to think about this and choose your subject carefully and also the distance between you and the subject and the distance between you and the foreground elements. So this is the first lens that I don't recommend buying if you're a beginner landscape photographer. The second lens that I don't recommend as your first lens as a beginner landscape photographer is the 70 to 200 millimeters. Uh, I remember when my wife was a beginner photographer um, I didn't have any other lens to give to her and I, and I gave her the 70 to 200. It was so difficult for her to photograph with that lens, even though the 70 to 200, to 200 it's a special lens for a landscape photographer. It's, it allows you to have that intimate connection between you and nature. But as a beginner, you tend to think that what you're seeing, and that is the whole landscape in front of you, should be in your scene. Well, uh, that's not the case either. Uh, but also it's a lot difficult as a beginner landscape photographer to think about subjects and the way you frame them with a longer focal length. Um, and also another problem that the 70 to 200 generates is a smaller depth of field if you don't know how to use it. Of course, for portraits, it's great, but for landscapes, it usually end, uh, you end up with some blurry elements that you don't want to be blurry and it's difficult to understand as a beginner uh, what's the depth of field and what are the elements that affect uh, the depth of field. Now before we continue let me remind you that in May between May 7 and 13 I'm going to be in Tuscany with a photo tour and if you want to join me to photograph those picturesque hills and images just uh, check the description of this video. There's a link over there to my website and you can check the details about this photo tour and maybe I'll see some of you over there in Tuscany. So now, what is the lens that you should buy as your first lens if you're a beginner landscape photographer? Well, actually you have two options. I highly recommend my version, but you can also go with the other uh, option. So. The, the, the option that I'm using is the 24 to 105 F4 L lens image stabilized from Canon, of course, this is from Canon, but you can, uh, you can find the equivalents in, uh, in all brands. Now you can also go with a 24 to 70. Uh, some people buy that because it's an F2.8. I don't recommend it because it's 
um, it costs a lot more. It's a lot heavier because in a, it's an F2.8. And as a landscape photographer, you will never need the 2.8 uh, aperture. Now, if you also plan to do some portraits or some events with that lens, maybe that would be a better choice for you. But if you only want to, want to enjoy landscape photography, the 24 to 105 F4, it's the perfect lens for you. The main reason for using the 24 to 105, for me at least, it's the versatility. I also have a wide angle with the 24. It's not that wide, but it's wide enough on a full frame body. And I also have the 105 millimeters, which is pretty long in some situations. Of course, you can't photograph the mountains really far away, but this is not something that you would really want with this lens. I also have the option to switch my camera to crop mode and then I have 105 multiplied by 1.6 crop factor and in that situation of course I have um, a longer focal length and I can capture things a lot further away but when I'm inside the forest when I'm inside a city when I want to carry with me only one single lens the 24 to 105 is the lens to go for me. hope if you're a beginner landscape photographer you found this information useful and now you know exactly what to buy as your first quality lens because this is what i'm talking about buying quality lens uh, that will last for years and that are useful to you now if you have questions use the comment section below if you want to learn more about landscape photography i have an ebook on this topic and i also have a workshop and a photo tour that is uh, following you in May in Tuscany. Maybe you want to join that. And um, until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way to get better. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.